I'm Anne Thorpe. Welcome to Kai Order. I'm cooking for two cool Māori dudes today. I don't know what's happened to them. I'm getting these strange texts. I think they're lost. Not to worry. Let's check out the pātaka. I've got this beautiful ribeye beef on the bone from the Neat Meat Company. John Dory here. I've got the New Zealand green lip mussels over there. Organic eggs. I've also got some organic agria potatoes ginger, these beautiful fresh herbs, bok choy, and with this bowl of fruit, I'm going to make something delicious for the boys today. Look at my mussels. No, no, these ones down here, the New Zealand green lip mussels. They're unique to our waters and they're fantastic for our health. They're full of complex vitamin B group, omega-3, and my guests today love the green lip mussel. So they're getting them. Oh, see how fresh that is? That clammed down on my knife. That's how you should eat seafood, fresh as. Cut that beard off, but tough to eat. And prise it away from the shell like this. Put it on the tray. Like this. Now I've already shucked these for time's sake, so I'll pop them on the tray here. All these. Now I know the boys today love mussels. I think they've got mussels of their own too, but we'll check them out later. On top of these mussels, I'm going to put some parsley. Bit of ginger. I put a bit of chili on. See, I'm colouring them up. I put quite a bit of the chili on. So I hear these boys are quite fiery. You know what? I haven't got any coriander cut up here, so I'll just cut a, a little bit up and put them on my mussel here. Sprinkle that over the top too. Look at my mussels. They're pretty. And just some spring onion on the top, just for the hell of it. And I'm going local with my oil, this olive oil from Matakana, Oliens. Pour a little bit on. Now Matakana is just down the road there. They have a fantastic farmer's market every Saturday morning. There we go. What do you think? I just need to put this in the oven onto a grill. Not for long though. And we'll see what happens. Now remember, a quick blast. We don't want to mess these up. There we go, here they are. Two minutes it's taken. Any longer, you know the rules, chuck it out. It's no good. Plate them up. Put a lime juice over the top. There we go. Muscles under the grill, simple as. Good to go. I'm cooking John Dory today for the boys. Some rice bran oil into my pan. Heat that up. And I'm going to put a little bit of extra virgin olive oil in too because I love extra virgin olive oil. As soon as this oil is hot, I'm going to throw my John Dory into the pan. They say that this dark spot here is an evil eye that the John Dory wards off its predators with. 
something like that anyway. The John Dory is known as St. Pierre and also to us Māori it's called the Kūparu. So this oil is hot now, I'm going to pop my fish skin side down like in the pan, watch out. John Dory is a deep sea fish and when it stalks its food it's got this tube that comes out of its mouth, something like this I guess. And then it gets the, gets the fish. Love sardines, I'm told. So we can cook this fish at a high temperature because the skin will take the brunt of the heat. You can either finish it off in the oven if you like, but we're just going to finish it off here. Now I'm going to change pans here while that's cooking over there. I like using the rice bran oil, as I always tell you, because it's got a high temperature threshold. So when I put my vegetables in to fry up, or my little bits and bobs over there, it's going to sear it up, and it's going to be ready in pretty much an instant. Yep, that's cooking up beautifully. Let's put that back over here. Everything's on the go. So I've already cut up these peppers here. My John Dory over there is looking good. Into there with some red peppers. The red pepper is at its best at the moment. And I love the colour of them. I love using them. I've got a few shallots here that I'm going to cut up. I chuck them in there too. Chuck a few onion strips here into it too. Lovely fresh vegetables. A few garlic chives into there. You know you don't even need to cook these garlic chives. They're just so beautiful raw as well. They're ready. Pop them there. Bring these back. Now look, these are nearly ready. I just need to flip them over for a second. And turn this off. What they're going to do, they're going to cook in the warmth of the pan. We don't want the other side, the underside, to become hard. We just want to follow that heat through into the fish. And you know what? It's all ready. It's simple as that. So let's plate up. Look how gorgeous this John Dory is. It's a beautiful fish. Some of my greens over the top. Think about all the colours that you can use when you do cook. Those five colours a day, just pour over the juice of the John Dory over the top. It's all you'll need. And let's garnish with half a lemon. And there you go. How about that? I'm hungry. Oh, it's a nice view, but oh, there's no kai. Thank you. Ah, hey, you know about that gate? Hey, that's not. That what? fence? Yeah, it's on. <laughs> and! Get in! Awa hoki, ko Julia Moorcox me te arehi mai bi, ngā manuiri mō tēnei rā. Hey mate, you've arrived, thank God. <laughs> Lovely to see you. And you too. What a beautiful party. Hello. <laughs>
You can call off the search party, we made it. Kia ora nei, kei te rongau te reko o te kai. Ngari tako whakapai, kai iti noa te kai. Te take pe e whā ngā wāhanga o te kai. We weren't far off the mark, we were talking powers, but... Oh, muscle. Yeah, yeah. Mmm. That's good. Mmm. You did well, eh? Mmm. You're placing unrealistic expectations on my wife. <laughs> well, she is a good cook. <laughs> but look, she's going to be seeing this and I'm going to be coming home and thinking that we're going to have... Well, she would have seen it cooked tonight and she can just do it for you. Mm. It's simple as. Exactly. It's all simple. Yeah, and it tastes really good too. Oh, I'll give delicious. you a coffee. Coffee. Mmm. <laughs> delicious. I, I didn't mean to do it so quickly. <laughs> you <ready> to beat me? <laughs> oh, I'm savouring it. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm going to rush in there. <laughs> Leave you to it in a minute. Carry on, and I'll be back. Come on, Kia Looking forward to it. Cozy. You know the story, bro. John Dory. Oh, John Dory. You know the story about the John Dory. I've never ever tasted John Dory before. Haven't you? No. It's a good eating fish, eh? It is a good eating fish. It's a deep sea fish. It's got a little spot on the side of it. It is the thumb of Christ, eh? Yes, yes. It's the forty loaves fish. The, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thumb of Christ, I reckon. Is that right, mate? Well, I didn't know that myself. Yeah, well, uh, that's what some old kaimata told me in the car. Yeah, yeah. no, that'll be right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll okay, be right. Yeah, but it's good eating fish, mate. It's called the kuparu in Māori. In Māori. Oh, yeah. Māori word, yeah. Mm. Hey, I knew something that you did. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Mark? Okay, I win. <laughs> <laughs> she seen a monkfish? No, that's an ugly fish, don't I? They reckon that's the Tawara Niko fish. <laughs> it is the ugliest fish. That God, if this was the one that, if this one had God's fingerprint on it, or Jesus' fingerprint, this would, Jesus Christ stepped on this one. It's that ugly. Were you modelling at one point there? Um, I wouldn't say modelling would be the uh, appropriate <laughs> term, more so being duped into doing a photo shoot that I was not oh, aware was going to actually happen. I saw it. It was in the Canvas magazine. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, that was the one. That's that, all right. I've been in there too, so, you know, I'm interested in reading it. And there you were. Have you, were you in their top all his glory. Not that time. No, not yeah. that time. No. In all no. his glory. Yeah. Naked from what the waist you, up. What, oh. the, the article was about uh, male masculinity. Yeah, you know, and I... You uh, qualify. Well, you know, <laughs> I'm from Huntley. You know, I've got a bit of facial hair, a bit of body hair. That's a couple of ticks there on, on the list. But um, we started getting pretty deep, deep into the whole... Um, until the whole experience and stuff like that, but and um, somehow or, or another, we had we had four different photo shoots at four different places. They took about three shots of me with no top on, there and and I say, oh, yeah, sweet ass, no worries, I'll take it off. Straight afterwards, they go, we're going to not using that shot, eh, bro? He goes, no, 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 no. Three times I asked them, don't make sure they don't use that shot and. Lo and behold. Yeah, well. For all the know. world to see, for the nation to see. Look, I know how David Beckham feels like now. I can identify <laughs> well, position. I think it's a wonderful thing that you actually made the male masculinity page. Don't you think? I mean, were you on there, Julian? Yeah, that's a good you point. Know, what is that? That's a very, no. very good point. Yeah, they're waiting for the metro sexual um, edition <laughs> to come out. It'll be front cover that one. That's a good point. And that was, that was delicious. Mm. We, said, we got a word in it for ngāboi, but in ngāboi we call it, and really you use it for meat. I mean, the, the juice comes out and you dip it back in the juice, and you taste it and it's all sweet with juice and stuff. We say, ah punga punga. Ah punga punga te kai. Ah, you, don't, you don't hear it much. Ah punga punga te kai. Well, that's what that was, you know, <laughs> juice and ah punga punga te kai. Will you guys just carry on chatting? Because I've got something really, really fabulous <laughs> awesome, <man>. for you <laughs> next. Sure. I'm cooking butty today in this great big huge beef rib on the bone from the Neat Neat Company is the order of the day. Look how this ribeye beef is just carving up gorgeously here. Nice big beautiful slab of meat. Now 
As Māori, we like to cook everything together, like we do in the hāngi or in the pot with the pork and pūha. And today I'm going to do everything on my grunty grill here, except the rewai that I've got in the pot here, that's potatoes. And I haven't got long because I don't want to keep them waiting too long outside there. First thing I'm going to do with these steaks is put in some garlic. Cut these garlic cloves into half and then spear them into the meat. Just push them in. Because there's nothing nicer than garlic studded steak, is there? And then I'm going to coat the meat generously with black pepper. I'm going to put a bit of salt over the beef because salt brings out the flavour of beef. I'm going to put a little bit of rice bran oil onto my grunty here, whack it onto the grill, just like that, and sear it. In the meantime, in here, I've got some spuds boiling. Now I've told you before that my favourite spud is the agria potato. So these are organic ones to boot. And what I love about them is that you can cook all the way, you can boil them, you can bake them, roast them. And they taste delicious. They do. How are these doing? These are on full tit over here. Searing nicely. Make sure that the pan, whatever you use, or the grill is really, really hot. And turn it only once. So on this side, I'm going to put some more pepper, just like on the other side. Now if you're into beef like I am, you know I'm into kaimana as well. You'll want it to be as tasty as it could possibly be. Adding salt, pepper, garlic is going to be the ultimate for the piece of meat. Look at that. I'm going to flip that over now. Mmm. Now I want this steak to be medium rare. So I'll get on to the next thing. And the next thing I'm going to be doing is cutting up this onion. So I'm going to have nice big slabs of onion, rings I guess you could call them, and then put them on the Grundy grill here. It's going to be seared on the outside and they're going to be really mushy inside. I suppose caramelising the onions a little is what we're doing here. Now I can see these steaks are nearly ready, so I'm going to get them off here. Remember we're only turning them once. And I'm going to put them into the warmer of the oven just to sit for a while until everything else is done. And they will be absolutely perfect. You mark my words. These are ready. Now the most marvellous thing about this dish is that you can do it all in the oven too if you want to. Here we go. And I'll put them into the warmth of my oven with the steak. And let's get onto those spuds. They must be ready by now. And I've roasted some garlic in the oven for about an hour. I'm going to cut the tops off. It's cooled right down now. And I'm going to mix it with my potato. We're going to moolie this potato up in here, in this contraption here. And I'm using this because I want a really fine result. And this thing gives it to you. It's certainly worth it if you've got somebody doing the dishes afterwards. But the good old fashioned masher does the trick too. Now with this roasted garlic that I've roasted in the oven, squirt it out here into the spud. We need the juice of a lemon, squeeze that in. And I like to use a little bit of Chardonnay vinegar in it. Put some salt, 
bit of pepper in there too. And in here I've got some blanched ground almond. So a couple of handfuls, which is probably about a quarter of a cup. And mix it up. Now really this is just a flash way of doing potatoes. It's a flash mash. I'm going to put a bit of this bok choy over on my grill here. I'm going to plate it up, my mash. Look at the size of these things. Put a few jalapenos on there. Put our onion on here. Mushies. And you know what, to finish this off, I'm going to put one of these googies on top, the eggs. It's going to act like the sauce. And then I'm going to sprinkle it with a bit of parsley and chilli, just for colour. And there we go. Very, very butty indeed. Well, I said I was going to do a butty main. Here we go. Butty main. Using the vernacular of the day. Yeah. Did not disappoint. Yeah. I just ate something quite hot. Was it some? That's that jalapeno there. Oh, this one here? Yeah, that, okay. that, that puts hairs on your chest too. Let me cut that in half. Out of here doesn't need any, we've already seen it. <laughs> the whole country's seen it. Funny thing, I think I've still got that canvas magazine. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I just had that mouthful, I kind of rated myself as a steak cook. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reconsidering now. <laughs> Mm. Like you said before, I'm struggling, but I'm battling on. <laughs> I, ain't gonna, I ain't gonna let this defeat me. I'm going for it. Well, I've had to down my tools, and I'm going to go into the kitchen and cook us a lovely little light dessert. Oh. How's that sound? It sounds great. Okay, I'm out of here. Oh, cuz. Can I have your mashed potatoes? Far, bro. It's a good effort, man. Whew. Well, I've just left the boys out there eating those brontosaurus steaks and I'm going to make something really delicate for us. Uh, are you sick of me talking about fresh fruit? I hope not because fruit is so good for us and you're getting it again today. Same old thing, I'm sorry to say, on the pan, a little bit of water and in with the palm sugar. What I'm doing today, because the fruit is so fresh, I'm only making a little sauce to go over the top of it. Into this are the usual suspects. I'm going to throw a cinnamon stick. I'm going to throw some cloves this time. Star anise, of course. How fabulous. And my ginger. I can't go without ginger on this thing. And once that sugar's melted right down, I'm going to add this passion fruit because that's going to be my sauce that goes over the fresh fruit. Hey, that smells gorgeous. Cut this passion fruit up now. Squeeze it in there. That syrup will sweeten it all up. Plate this up. We've got peaches, oranges, mango and melons. All those lovely colours and flavours with some mint strewn through it with that lovely passion fruit palm sugar syrup. You can't go wrong. Lovely. We've got the same tactics. After a good old bucket of KFC, I'll finish it off with an apple <laughs> just to kind of make myself feel better about myself. <laughs> I think I could tell by the, my waistline how it's just kind of grown a few centimetres in the last hour or so how much I enjoyed it. Well, let's not talk about waistlines. <laughs> I'm glad there's a table between mine and the camera. <laughs> well, I've just realised you've got a task to do. Yeah, so I've done most of the talking. You can do so. <laughs> Given some of the performers you had on your show, in the past few years, it's 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 awfully embarrassing to be asked. 
<laughs> Given the lack of lack of a skill. But I thought of one that I think Tara he knows. So it's about Cinderella, you know, the Cinderella song? Right. Because right. you know, you're you're our Cinderella and you took us to the ball. And uh, and now it's time for us to go home. So um well, I, I think it is, because you're making out like it is. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, you know, if there's leftovers. Anyway. Um, okay. <laughs> Oh, 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 that was really bad. That was, <laughs> that was the worst song you've had. Oh no, I, you just said you wanted a song. But hey, cool She's nader, sign off. and see you next week. You could have told, we could have practiced on the way up here. You oh, spring well, the I up. just thought of it now, you asked. <laughs> no, we just absolutely, I think I'm more embarrassed about this than the candidate. <laughs> <laughs> Being honest. <laughs>